learn more about popular music, the Library of Congress suggests these books. Popular Music, an annotated guide to recordings by Dean Tudor. Riding on a Blue Note, Jazz and American Pop by Gary Giddens. The Sound of the City, The Rise of Rock and Roll by Charlie Gillett. These and many other interesting books are waiting for you in your local library and bookstore. Visit them and they'll be happy to help you read more about it. This is CBS. Pour it on Quaker fruit and cream. Stir it up Quaker fruit and cream. What a taste, what a dream. The cream of the crop, Quaker fruit and cream. Quaker introduces fruit and cream instant oatmeal, bananas and cream, blueberries and cream, peaches and cream, and strawberries and cream. Four rich, smooth tastes you won't find in any other cereal. The cream of the crop, Quaker fruit and cream. Instant oatmeal, Quaker fruit and cream. In Houston, there's only one radio station that gives you both light rock and less talk. K-Lite, 93.7 FM. People listen to K-Lite all day long because they love the variety. A great mix of the best light rock from yesterday and today. K-Lite's music is never too hard or too soft. And now there are more light rock selections than ever with hardly any talk. So at work, at home, in the car, anywhere, turn on K-Lite, 93.7 FM. Light rock, less talk. MASH, tonight, following the news. Three hours of deliberations have failed to produce a verdict in the murder trial of a former Liberty County school principal, and the jurors have been sequestered in a Livingston hotel tonight. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Hurley Fontenot has been charged with killing his school's football coach, Billy Mack Fleming, in a trial that has lasted more than a month now. 11 News' Cindy Kennard has the latest. Waiting for the jury verdict did not seem to bother Hurley Fontenot. I feel fine, other than this headache I have. Assistant prosecutor David Walker was growing concerned that no decision after three hours might eventually mean a hung jury. I'm always concerned about a verdict. And uh, it's been a long trial, so I expect it to be a long deliberation. Prosecutors say Fontenot killed Coach Fleming because both men loved school secretary Laura Nugent. Nugent joined others like Fleming's ex-wife Linda and Coach Fleming's family in the courtroom waiting for a jury decision. During final arguments this afternoon, Walker said for Bill Fleming, Hurley Fontenot was a judge, a jury, and an executioner. Defense attorney Dick DeGarren blamed lawmen for losing key pieces of evidence in the case, namely the clothes Fleming was wearing when his body was found. DeGarren indicated that perhaps Linda Fleming might know what really happened to the coach. And of Fontenot, DeGarren said he simply did not do it. Judge John Martin sent the 10-woman, two-man panel to a local hotel after three hours of deliberations failed to bring a verdict. They'll resume their proceedings at 9 a.m. Wednesday. If Fontenot is convicted, he faces up to life in prison and or a $10,000 fine. City Kennard, 11 News. Meanwhile, two executions scheduled for tonight and tomorrow night have now both been put on hold. A judge stayed the execution of Bobby Moore, sentenced to die overnight tonight for the 1980 murder of an elderly Houston grocery store clerk. And another judge stayed tomorrow night's scheduled execution of Jeffrey Barney, who was convicted in the 1981 rape and murder of the wife of a Pasadena minister. Harris County detectives have now arrested one man and are looking for another in connection with the murders of three people on board a Channel View houseboat last week. Police say when 40-year-old Carl Edward Napier was picked up on a worthless checks warrant, they found some items from the boat in his car. The victims, Jack Carlin and his wife Kitty, both 63, and their 31-year-old son Andrew, were all found shot to death by a family friend last Thursday night. Top rocket engineers recommended against launching the shuttle Challenger in cold weather, but a NASA manager called that idea appalling and went ahead with the launch. John Getter reports that the Presidential Commission on the Disaster was told that NASA delegated the launch decision to rocket engineers. They reportedly made management decisions instead of engineering safety ones. January 24th, 1985, the Discovery lifted off the launch pad. Its solid rocket motors, recovered from the Atlantic, showed evidence of near disaster. An O-ring had leaked, nearly burning through. That event, Morton Thiokol engineer Roger Boisjoli told the Presidential Commission investigating the Challenger disaster, convinced him cold weather made a known weakness in those rings very dangerous in cold weather. In my mind, we were, you know, just playing with uh, a dangerous situation. 
That's why he argued against the launch of Challenger on a record cold morning, argued to his co-worker Alan McDonald, who agreed. McDonald said he felt that between cold weather, rough seas for rocket recovery ships, and ice on the pad, it was no go for launch. He told NASA managers that. In fact, I uh, made the direct statement that if anything happened to this launch, uh, told them I sure wouldn't want to be the person that had to stand in front of a board of inquiry to explain why I launched this outside of the uh, qualification of the solid rocket motor or any shuttle system. McDonald and others said that unlike ever before, there was pressure to prove Challenger was not safe to launch rather than proving it ready to go. In the end, the commission heard engineers predicted impending disaster, that they were ignored, and their concerns not passed on to top-level managers at NASA who could have prevented the Challenger explosion. At Johnson Space Center, John Getter, 11 News. A Texas youngster has been hurt by a piece of glass found in a jar of Gerber baby food. A four-month-old boy in Dallas began bleeding in the mouth as his mother was feeding him Gerber-strained peas. A paramedic then found a fragment of glass in the jar. The Food and Drug Administration is examining Gerber products taken from store shelves in Pasadena, where a mother found glass slivers in her child's apple juice. Gerber and the FDA don't know where the glass is coming from. There has been no official recall, but the FDA will continue to look into the problem. Ferdinand Marcos, the toppled leader of the Philippines, is in Guam tonight after fleeing the presidential palace that he had ruled for 20 years. Meanwhile, Filipinos here in Houston offered prayers for their new leader, Corazon Aquino. This mass at Notre Dame Church was for Aquino supporters only, but the local Filipino community hopes to resolve any differences that might exist between Marcos and Aquino loyalists. CBS News will have a special report on the Philippines tonight, right after our news and right before MASH. Still to come tonight, the stars shine backstage at the Grammy Awards. That report and more news coming right up. For nearly 40 years, she's carefully selected from some of the finest available. Her dish, Mrs. Paul's light seafood entrees, like new classic fish and pasta florentine, tender chunks of white fish with spinach and tomatoes in a cream sauce. The price, 240 microwavable calories. If you buy seafood entrees for the seafood, try Mrs. Paul's. Her fish makes the dish. Who publishes more books in a day than you could read in a lifetime? Puts through more calls to cars each week than the New York City Police Department? Who can transmit all the information in the encyclopedia in less than two seconds? And offers the most advanced products to handle it all? Who does all this? Southwestern Bell. From telephone to total communications. Burger King celebrates the morning. Good morning. With a light, flaky croissant sandwich. Morning. Morning. A hot breakfast croissant. Morning. Filled with eggs. Good morning. And melted cheese. Good morning. With crisp bacon, tender ham, or spicy sausage. Good morning. With croissant sandwiches and more, that's breakfast. Good morning. With Burger King. A Houston school bus carrying some deaf students overturned late this afternoon. It happened as the students were on their way home from Barbara Jordan School. The driver said she felt something break loose near the front of the bus, and seconds later it was tumbling out of control. The driver, Elizabeth Johnson, was injured. Nine students were treated and released. Authorities say the accident could have been deadly if the students had not been wearing seat belts. Pilots for Eastern Airlines tonight have a new contract, but they aren't looking forward to working for Texas Air. Tonight in Houston, the pilots met to talk about the new contract. They agreed to a 20% pay cut and a reduction in benefits. But the pilots say their airline was sold out from underneath them in spite of their concessions. We feel it was a decision that was made in, in haste, and it was a bad decision. 
and we are, our legal people are addressing that issue at the present time. Eastern pilots had been prepared to strike. Before the settlement, there's still some question as to whether Eastern has reached a similar agreement with their flight attendants. At a public hearing tonight, residents of the Huntley subdivision turned out in mass to protest the expansion of Chimney Rock Road. It's supposed to become a thoroughfare between Westheimer and I-10. But residents, as well as some students from the Duchenne Catholic Girls School and their parents, say the road will destroy their peaceful neighborhood. Some people are considering legal action even. Construction of the project is set for early next year. Time now for a special report, slums among the wealthy suburbs of our city. Tonight, a look at health codes. Judd McElvain reports not only are there no inspections, there are no inspectors. Southwest of Houston, near the well-groomed country club neighborhoods of Missouri City and Stafford, sits a housing slum that Fort Bend County officials call no man's land. These shanties rent for about $65 per month. They have no running water or toilets inside. Many are rat infested. This is Fort Bend County's only health inspector, Kim Jones. She says the county does not have the authority to inspect private rental property for health problems. In order to go on to a private property, we must have the owner's permission. And we need to get that in writing before we do that. And most owners that realize they have problems on their property are not willing to do that sort of thing for us. What about building codes for rental shanties? There are no codes in Fort Bend County and no building inspectors. There are two small wells on the property that are used to run water to faucets in front of the homes Then residents use garden hoses to get the water. There is no running water in the homes. We are also going to be working with the state health department to determine whether those homes on Farrell Street are a uh, public water supply. If they are, then the owner will ask to be brought in compliance with uh, state drinking water standards. Not only do these houses not have running water inside, the bathroom facilities are at the back of the property in little outhouses. The owner of the rental property is Dorothy Farrell of Sugarland. We tried to talk with her about the conditions of the property for which she collects thousands of dollars in rent from the poor people. She declined to talk with us. But her daughter told us her mother loves the poor people who live there. She says you must realize this is low rent property and the rent just covers the taxes on the land. Tax records show the property is valued at more than one quarter of a million dollars. The daughter says if the mother is forced to use rent money to improve the property, then she would recommend that they tear down the houses, leaving the residents to find other homes. Father Mantovina of the Holy Family Church, who has been working with county officials to get federal aid for water and sewers, says he fears the landlord would force the people out rather than spend the money to fix up the property. Tomorrow we'll talk with the priest, whom the renters call Father Tim, about the fears the people who rent the shanties have. He says he's trying to find them help. Judd McElvain, 11 News. All right, time now for the weather. Just before the regular rodeo tonight, we were fortunate enough to take part in a rodeo for exceptional children. A uh, real neat deal, and we'll have a report on that tomorrow night at 5. Yeah, it doesn't make you feel good, does it? It does indeed. Yeah, I used to work a lot with uh, except, exceptional kids, and it uh, does get you right in the heart. You bet. Anyways, get some nice weather. You don't get much nice weather inside the dome, do you? No, I guess it's about 72. <laughs> that must be nice. A hot day. This close to a record. Tomorrow we might hit it. More heat. Mini heat wave, in fact. Back in a moment. To save money, many companies are performing major surgery on their health care plans. Scissors. First, we'll cut the benefits. Pen. Now, we'll raise the deductible and cut the contribution. They need a Humanicare Plus health care plan. Humana is a hospital company, so we can control costs, saving employers and employees money. And Humanicare Plus saves the benefits. That's it for now. Humanicare Plus. Our health care plans save you more than money. Hot news from your Toyota dealers, Sizzling Saturday is coming this Saturday. It could be your hottest day to drive home a deal on a Toyota car or passenger van. A big selection must be sold this Saturday, so they'll do almost anything to make hotter-than-ever deals and give a hotter-than-ever price for your trade-in. They'll be open late. More time to make your best deal ever on the number one automotive value, Toyota. So what are you waiting for? It's this Saturday. <laughs> Who could ask for anything more? 
with your play, Viva la Difference. Viva la berries, Viva la creme, Viva la taste, Viva la them, Viva la creamy difference, Viva la yoplait. You'll taste the difference in yoplait. It's fresh country fruit blended with a creamy French difference. Viva la cherry, strawberry too, Viva la creme fresh to you, Viva la creamy difference, Viva la yoplait. Papillon is the delicious French wine with a delightfully modest price. Of course, there are many more expensive wines, but by and large, you'll find their prices are much higher. More heat and it feels so good, you kind of want to slap on the sun so I head for the beach. Really, it, it's that warm out. We missed a record. 82 is what we got to today. 84 is the record. Now, tomorrow, we might tag it. Might just get to it. 83 is the record. On the, uh, the radar, we're showing uh, this is snow mixed. That's just a little messy up there. Nothing major. This is rain in the northern sections of the Rockies. That warm air has gotten way up there. The freeze level is at about 8,000, 9,000 feet. Now, they're finding problems out there because... Uh, of the warm winds and the strong winds they've had, uh, up to 60 mile an hour winds and they're warm, so there's a snow melt going on there and of course you know that means flooding. And down on the eastern slopes, uh, we're having the Chinook winds and the Indians used to call it the great uh, snow eater. It could uh, take care of two feet of snow in about an hour. So uh, there's great American meltdown going on there. See, these are some of the records. Boise, 70 degrees today and uh, that is a record, that's an all time high for February. Uh, kind of like the heat we were feeling last week. 77 San Francisco was a record. Las Vegas, that's the hottest they ever got in uh, February 2. Denver 74, even Midland hit a record today of 83 degrees. And in fact, Wichita Falls got to 85 today. Over Texas, gee, there's, there's just no, nothing going on, nothing at all. Now what we have in here is a trough that is heading south and east. All right, and if you follow this trough southward during the next 24 hours, all this will do will ensure a southerly flow upstairs as well as downstairs. So a southwesterly flow coming across, that is going to be dry. Also from the west, another flow, that will be dry too. And so we're looking for some dry air in here, and the dry air will heat up faster, of course, uh, with the afternoon sun. For tomorrow, the heat is still on. Emerald at about 78. Look for an 87 maybe at St. Angelo, Lubbock 84, and ahead of this thing too. See up towards Dallas 84, 85 towards Austin. San Antonio should hit about 85. Even Brownsville 85. So the air is dry and it heats up fast. Right now, Intercontinental, it is clear. Temperature right now holding at 63, humidity 70%, southeast winds at 7, and the barometer on the rise once again. Today we get up to 82, and last night a nippy 47. And that's what we're going to see is warm days to almost hot days, really, uh, compared to the nighttime temperatures in the uh, 48, 50 degree category. So a little cool at night. Right now at uh, Hobby 63 here at the station, 67 in downtown, Galveston 62, and our friends in chat with about 62 degrees your way, too. Here's the forecast once again. Here's that trough, and it's just going to ensure that southerly warm flow. Now up here we're going to find some snow sleet mixed up over the lakes, the upper Mississippi Valley, cool over the eastern sections of the country too. Even down into northern sections of Florida, it was rather cool there uh, today, and it's going to be cool once again for Tampa maybe tomorrow, double sixes. So that's a little cool for them this time of year. 70 once again as the heat is still on over the Rockies. 74 for L.A., some fog out there once again too. But we're going to have that southerly flow. Alrighty. Now this is the picture here. Here's where the jet is right now. Now for Saturday, this thing's going to kind of uh, slip a little bit further towards the south and east. And when it does that, maybe a little bit of cooler air is going to get in here uh, over the extreme northern sections, which should just skirt us and miss us. So we're going to be on the warm side. North and east of us will be on the cool side. And that will be the picture for the weekend. Just a couple degrees cooler for Saturday and Sunday. South winds at 15 knots. Until that time, by the way, enjoy the heat. Really, lower 80s. Semi-glass or semi-chop on the bay, 3 to 5 foot seas. Sun will be out. Watch for some fog, 70 degrees for a high. Forecast, let's take a look. It's going to be a nice one. Fair sky and cool, a low of 54 tonight. Then for tomorrow, find the sun back out. It's going to be warm. And uh, maybe a record. The record's 83. We'll go for it. And then the extended outlook down the road. It'll look this way. 84 for Thursday. That is not a record. Friday, 82. A little cooler on Saturday, as we explained. A little chance of rain. If you're traveling around, a few spots will be this way. Zunkerville. Zunkerville. That fit that's right in with the music, didn't it? Yeah, yeah that's, that's your banjo. instrument. You do pretty well on that. I try a little banjo yeah. work here and there. But anyways, another out. warm day tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Still to come, backstage at the Grammy Awards. Don't go away. I'm Joe Petro, seeking a senior transportation position. I've had extensive experience in domestic and international shipping, delivering high-tech and bulk shipments economically and on time. 
As an adaptable and aggressive individual, I'm well versed in license requirements, rate and contract negotiations, client relations and operations management. Thank you. If you need more information about job search, call the Texas Employment Commission Employer Service Office at 630-3290. These days, there are licenses for pets and licenses to love. But the best license of all is the license to win sweepstakes in the Houston Post. With over a quarter of a million dollars in cash or cards. Just send us your driver's license number on an official entry form or facsimile. Then check the post for daily winners. I will. It could mean $10,000 in cash or one of six fabulous new cars. I will. But you got to have a license. I do. A post license to win sweepstakes. Hi, I'm Mr. Telephone. Picture this. You're a corporate mogul. A toll-free number appears on your screen. You call it and start using LDS for long distance at your company. You save more than you would with AT&T, MCI, or Sprint. You take the savings that LDS gives you, invest them wisely, and pretty soon you are so rich it is downright shameful. It could be you. You spend so much time trying to keep your face soft and smooth. But aren't you forgetting something? Your hands and body need attention, too. New Jergens Extra Dry Skin Lotion's kind of attention. New Jergens was enriched with even more natural moisturizers that help smooth away dry, dull skin, revealing the healthy glow hidden underneath. The result? A whole new you. New Jergens Extra Dry Skin Lotion helps smooth away dry, dull skin. My turn. History. All right. Who was Germany's most decorated aviator in World War I? Come on. That's a good question. A very good question. So oh. <laughs> you talk to Intex Wednesday. Talking basketball at the top of sports, and we don't really have any reason usually to feel sorry for the guys. They make a nice buck. They have a nice job. They play ball and games I, for a living. But you said we should maybe think. It it's can not be so difficult easy. at times. It really can, Felicia. One of the things you have to put up with in the NBA is back-to-back -back games in different cities on consecutive nights. After beating the Mavericks last night in the Summit, the Rockets are playing the Jazz tonight in Salt Lake City. Take a look at Lou Lloyd. The Rockets do a good job in the fast break in the first half. They led 54 to 52 at halftime. Then in the third quarter, watch Lloyd on the drive. He takes it to the hoop, misses the shot. Carl Malone gets the ball, and he elbows Lloyd. Now watch this. The blood comes dripping out of Lloyd's head right there. It's all over the white paint. Lloyd gets up. He has to leave the game. One more time in slow motion. Watch Malone. He grabs grabs the ball. This was a flagrant elbow. His eyes are looking at Lloyd. He goes right after him, pops him right in the head. The Rockets lose Lloyd tonight, and they also lose to Utah, 100 to 97. In other action tonight in the NBA, Golden State gets past New Jersey. Boston keeps New York under 75. Indiana beat Washington by 13. It was Philadelphia knocking off Chicago. Denver leading Phoenix. That game is late. That's bad news for the Rockets, and Milwaukee slides past the Clippers tonight. Several high school state basketball playoffs being played tonight around the state. A couple of games scheduled for Hoffines Pavilion on the U of H campus. A Leaf Hastings matched against Kashmir. Hastings big center Roderick Brown hits from the inside. But watch as Kashmir runs the break. Shown Wyatt skies. And then watch what does he, this is only high school. He gets up there and stuffs it through. Kashmir wins over Hastings, 57-56. Clear Lake wins tonight. Laporte wins tonight. In the second game at Hoffines, Worthing lost to Wheatley, 104-83. Take a look at what happens after the first basket at Notre Dame. <laughs> it's incredible. DePaul visiting tonight. The Fighting Irish led tonight by Donald Royal. 16 or for 16 from the foul line, had a career-high 26 points. The Irish win by 11 in South Bend. One of the most pleasant surprises for the Houston Astros last year was the pitching of Mike Scott. Scotty turned out to win the most games of any Astro pitcher last year and would love to hit the magic 20-game win mark this year. Steve Mark has more from Florida. Mike Scott was the surprise of 1985. While Nolan Ryan and Joe Necro had mediocre seasons, Scott was the ace of the staff, 18 wins after learning the split-fingered fastball. Now Scotty wants to prove last year wasn't a fluke. Well, all I can do is get in the best shape possible and go out and pitch as hard as I can and hope it comes out the same, if not better. Got to shoot for better. This year, the Astros have just three proven starters searching for a fourth and fifth. And because of that, the team will rely on Mike Scott even more than last year. 
after Scott, Ryan, and Bob Nepper, the Astros pitching staff has a bunch of questions. It's pretty unexpected when you get past number three. Well, that's better than coming in here with one. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Now we have three, you know, solid men, that's for sure. A year ago, Mike Scott would have never considered himself the Astros' number one starter. Now he's one of the top pitchers in the National League. Add another pleasant surprise in 1986, like Scott was a year ago, and the Astros have a positive outlook. If a few things fall into place, it can be right there. Well, that's what it takes. You look at uh, Cincinnati, how they had come back last year, and had Parker having the best year he's ever had, which helped, and Browning winning 20 games. And it just takes a lot of guys having good years. We have no really clear-cut winner in the division, so whoever puts the good years together is going to have the best chance of winning. With the Astros in Kissimmee, Steve Mark, 11 Sports. And Houston Oiler news today. The Houston Oilers decided not to go with the Derek Dolls anymore. They're going to find another form of entertainment at Houston Oiler games, so no more Derek Dolls. No kidding. That's it. Interesting. That's been controversial this year. Mm -hmm. All okay. right, Chips. Thank you, Giff. Uh, this late word just in. Another young person has died here in Houston after being shot. It happened late tonight in the 3200 block of Klein Street near Bayou. Police say a 15-year-old boy walked up to a car and talked briefly with an Hispanic man. Two shots were then fired, and the boy fell to the pavement. He was pronounced dead at the scene. And coming up next, words from the Grammy winners. We invite you to stay right where you are. If you come into Jack in the Box now, you're in for a surprise. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two of our famous tacos for only 99 cents. <laughs> Delicious spicy tacos filled with cheese, lettuce, and topped with zesty salsa. All for next to nada. It's our incredible taco deal. Ah, but it's for a limited time only. Ah, yeah, yeah. Get two regular tacos for only 99 cents at Jack in the Box. Smokers, this is new favor. It's a smoke-free cigarette. That's right, a smoke-free cigarette. You don't light it. It doesn't burn. You just inhale. And exhale. You get tobacco pleasure and satisfaction. But what you don't get is smoke. And neither do the people around you. New favor. Cigarette satisfaction. No smoke. Memorex brings you a slight exaggeration. Most floppy disk edges are sealed just here and there. But not Memorex. We seal every inch of every edge with solid seam bonding. So a Memorex edge fights bulges, puckers, warps. Because of all that jams your disk drive, you can lose all your data. And that's no exaggeration. Memorex has the edge. At the office, take the edge off a hectic day the light and easy way with Coda 99FM. And finally tonight, the 28th annual Grammy Awards are all over, and even as we speak, the winners continue to celebrate. Penny Crone, who picked the record of the year, joins us live now to show us the backstage reactions of some of the winners. Penny? Chip, one of the neatest things about the Grammys is it's totally unrehearsed. In the music business, there are no actors. So unlike the Emmys and the Oscars, when the celebrities get on stage, they don't talk a lot. They just want to get off stage. We caught them backstage, and guess what? They talked. The stars started arriving at 4 o'clock Los Angeles time. The biggest night in the music business was beginning. Literally thousands of music makers arrived at the Shrine Auditorium, dressed in all sorts of wonderful Hollywood outfits. They came to sing, to win, to lose, and to hear. Let's go backstage. Backstage after the winners win for some candid remarks. We didn't write it for an award or for any Grammy show or any other kind of show. It, we actually wrote it to save lives. The wonderful thing about it was it wasn't a category of the Grammys, but I must agree that we didn't write it for this particular purpose. Very emotional time and very exciting, that's all I can say. Yeah. My family has been the inspiration in my life. I mean, I come from a line of great singers. So there alone, that is inspiration and that alone will stand for itself.
Yeah, this is amazing. I mean, I, I, I really didn't think, I really honestly and sincerely didn't think that I would get come away with anything, maybe more than one, if I was lucky. Because, you know, it's a, it's a very strong year, there's a lot of good records around, and just to get here nominated, I, the way I feel about things, I'm, I feel very proud to just to get that far. We are the world. Once he came by and gave us the, this, the, um, the incidentals, but I will tell you the truth about it. We went upstairs from dinner, and about three hours later, we came downstairs and we had uh, the song. It just comes. Songs just kind of create themselves, so I don't want to dissect it, really. It just, <laughs> I let it happen. And as we're ready to call it a night, the parties are just beginning all over Los Angeles in the music business. Tonight makes New Year's Eve look like a normal Monday night. Felicia? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Penny. They are big fun. Well, now, MASH will be seen tonight.